Hey guys, today I'll be comparing the 10 best JRPGs on the PS1 according to the consensus with my own personal favorites. Absolutely no ports or remakes of any kind will feature in this video, so with that in mind, let's begin! Number 10. Breath of Fire 3 I made this consensus list based on how many times these 10 JRPGs appeared in several websites and online magazines and in what order. I can see why this game is so beloved and considered as the best in the series. It's got one of the most endearing and memorable character progression of its time. We see Ryu, Nina and other characters grow up from kids to teens to adults. I prefer Breath of Fire 4, honestly, which I barely saw in other lists out there. But yeah, I agree 3 is a great JRPG as well. However, currently my personal number 10 will be either Final Fantasy 7 or Parasite Eve. I think I'll stick to Final Fantasy 7 out of nostalgia. Like many people, it's one of the very first JRPGs I ever played. Probably my fifth one? And I honestly fell in love with it. I don't think it matters that much though, since all of these JRPGs are kind of outdated, didn't age marvelously, but most people respect them a lot. That's the one thing we can all agree on, I think. Is FF7 better than Breath of Fire 3 then? Well, I like it more, that's for sure, but I can guarantee most gamers will say it is. However, that's just because they only played Final Fantasy 7, probably. Well, I played both and I'm sticking with FF7, even though most fans will rank it way higher on their lists. Number 9. Grandia I don't know why I saw Grandia on a lot of websites. I know it's popular and recognized today, but in the past it was literally a hidden gem. Nevertheless, I'm happy I saw it's gotten a lot of recognition and it's held in such a high regard. I finished this RPG some time ago and enjoyed it, but it didn't win me over as much as it did with its fans. My pick for number 9 is less popular and strange, I know, but I'm sticking with Wild Arms 2. Yeah, even over the first one, which I also noticed included in several lists. This sequel isn't as beloved and I'll admit not even one list I saw had it, sadly. The reasons might be because throughout the years, reviewers haven't been too kind to it. I don't know why, they all have their reasons, I don't see anything wrong with it though. I think it surpassed the first one because storytelling improved, more characters and more development were there, combat evolved a little bit more but it felt more polished, graphics were now in 3D with polygons, maybe that's why, I don't know. I just thought it was an amazing game. I like it a little more than Grandia, it's just better for me, but I wouldn't argue that much if someone said otherwise. Grandia is a solid pick as well. Number 8. The Legend of Dragoon This is a game that appears often in lists and I don't question that, it really is a very solid JRPG with great graphics for its time, excellent storytelling and fun combat. Ironically, it sold way more in North America and Europe than it did in Japan. My personal favorite character is Rose and I think she's often a fan favorite as well. However, I prefer Vandal Hearts as my number 8, a criminally underrated strategy RPG by Konami that didn't get a lot of attention. Reasons why are because Konami was still on a rampage publishing games galore everywhere they could. Obviously a lot of them wouldn't receive preference for the best advertisement campaigns. Plus, while I personally find the character design interesting, most people didn't back then. It's not the typical anime or manga style, is it? The mature rating was also its downfall back in the day. It's part of its personality, which is exactly one of the reasons why I love it. But yeah, a JRPG with that M logo in the 90s was bad news. Anyway, I praise the creativity behind this game. Hard to compare against Dragoon since they're very different, but yeah, I'm sticking to my guns here with Vandal Hearts. Number 7. Chrono Cross Cross appears in a lot of lists, but very rarely in the first places. I did see a few websites with it on number 3 or 4, but I only saw a couple with it on number 1, including mine of course. 
Most reviewers rank it lower than it deserves in my opinion, so you already know I'm gonna rank this one far above most of the games you'll see today. Anyway, at least I'm glad a lot of online sites included in the top 10, but my number 7 is currently held by the glorious Star Ocean 2, also known as the second story. Man, this is one that I also saw in a lot of lists, just not enough to be part of the consensus I built, so I don't think most fans will disagree on this. It's a very beloved action RPG, the best on the system for me. Hell, a lot of fans will go on to say it's the best Star Ocean ever made. I don't think I disagree with that. Sure, it's brutal and somewhat unfair at times, but so is Cross. And I still love both. Cross is by far the winner here, but I'd never rank it this low. Number 6. Vagrant Story This is a surprise, I couldn't believe when I started seeing this complex JRPG in so many lists. Rarely in the first places though, but it appeared often. Lunar the Silver Star Story Complete was on numerous of them too, but I said at the beginning, no ports, remember? Vagrant Story is an action RPG where you need to target the right enemy body parts to succeed. You only play as one guy the entire game and it takes place in a gigantic dungeon. I never found this game appealing because of its complicated mechanics, I respect that a lot of people include it on their lists though, but my personal pick would be Xenogears. It needs no introduction, despite also being usually ranked higher in most lists. Even though a lot of people criticize its camera and encounter rate, including me, fact is it's considered as one of the absolute best. Is it better than Vagrant Story? Hell yeah! At least in mine and a lot of other people's opinions, but to each their own, right? I don't think Vagrant Story is a bad JRPG at all and it definitely deserves some respect. Number 5. Final Fantasy IX This game is my favorite Final Fantasy of all time, so of course I would rank it higher. I did see it on the first places on a lot of lists though, but others generally beat it to them. I'm glad this one is so well respected, it's got an extremely memorable cast, the most unique across the series, and a narrative that easily embodies the word fantasy itself. The way I see it, this is the epitome of the series. Now, my number 5 will personally be Valkyrie Profile, yet another JRPG I did see in a lot of websites, but nobody, and I mean nobody, had it on the first places. Well, as you can see, me neither, but I'm usually moving it around number 4 and 5. It aged really well, mostly because it's played in 2D. Story is one of the best out there from this era in the art style, while once again not classic manga style, it's very detailed and impressive. We all know its combat mechanics are also quite influential. I choose like other JRPGs more for small reasons, but this could easily be on the first places of my list. Story and combat are even better than Final Fantasy IX in my opinion, but the latter is just so freaking charming and memorable that I can't resist a higher rank for it. Number 4. Final Fantasy Tactics once again, I'm in a disagreement here, I understand this game is legendary, one of the most influential strategy RPGs of all time, if not the most. I've tried it a couple of times and couldn't really get into it, but I haven't really given it one last chance. Between you and me, I'm waiting for some kind of remaster, just like I did with its father Tactics Ogre. Hey, I ended up greatly enjoying that one, maybe a remaster of FFT will have the same effect on me. But yeah, currently this game is not even in my top 10. Like I said, usually Valkyrie Profile takes this spot, or the very first Suikoden. You know what, let's go with that one. It feels kinda primitive in some areas compared to the later entries in the series, but it's still a fantastic game that aged decently. Sure, it's short even if you recruit all 108 characters to get the better ending. But those are, what, 20 hours? Very well spent. I may be biased because I'm a sweeter than diehard, but I think the consensus towards it is very positive, though not as positive as it appears on many lists. In fact, it was barely in anyone's top 10. Regardless, I love it and it's my solid number 4 as opposed to FFT. Which game is better? Hard to compare, obviously I prefer Suikoden, but how can it compete against the most influential and popular tactical RPG ever made? Number 3. Xenogears 
All right, this is it, the top three. I found Xenogears on many, many first places of any kind of top 10 of any number whatsoever. A lot of fans call it a masterpiece despite some of its annoying flaws. I'm a huge fan of this game, so I just can't disagree with its ranking. It definitely deserves a spot in most top 10s and even on the first places. I ranked it on number 6 though precisely because of the gameplay issues and dated mechanics. It's just not that fun for me to go back to it and play it nowadays. Exactly the reason why tons of fans dream of a remaster or a faithful remake. My number 3 nowadays is perhaps Final Fantasy IX or another game we'll see in a bit. I already talked about FF9 so there's no need to repeat myself on how much I love it, but yeah, Xenogears on number 3 or slightly lower or slightly higher. I would never question or disagree with that. It's a legendary RPG for very good reasons, its story being one of them quite often. Number 2, Suikoden 2. This one often competes with the next JRPG on the list for the first place. I saw it way too many times on it actually, and guess what? It ties with my own list! I've ranked it before on the third place a few times, but only because nostalgia wins me over Final Fantasy IX. But officially, nowadays 2023, Suikoden 2 is also my number 2 JRPG on the PlayStation. So I guess there's nothing to compare it to, huh? But I will say this, everything that was awesome about its prequel was surpassed in this one, everything. It aged surprisingly well and it's being remastered this very same year along with the first one. Curiously though, it took a drastic amount of years for it to be recognized by the consensus. I remember back in the day barely anyone knew it or cared about it. It's interesting how the internet has changed a lot of things for the bad in gaming, but also for the good. Suikoden 2 being so highly rewarded in modern times is a perfect example. Number 1. Final Fantasy 7 well, you knew this would be here. Contrary to my own list where I rank it at nowadays at number 10, it's always been a dear game to me, but it's just that I fell in love way more with the others out there. In fact, I don't argue when I don't see it in lists. I did find a few without it, which was surprising, but the majority of them had this at number 1. I remember my two videos on the best PS1 JRPGs did not include this game either. It's overrated, it's still amazing and I love it, but it is and being so damn often on number one is starting to get old and feels somewhat fake, like people just vote for it because that's the only RPG they played on the PS1. It didn't age that well, honestly, but story and characters have already transcended time. So what is my number one? Well, obviously Hoshigami, a masterpiece tactical RPG far superior to any other released on any console. I lied, it's one of the worst out there. Cross is my number one, you know that very well. The one game that made me a JRPG addict. The one game that made me go buy more RPGs of its kind, such as Final Fantasy VII. And the one responsible for me creating this YouTube channel. So there you go. I strongly disagree FF7 is number one. I like Cross way more. But eh, I don't mind this game's huge popularity among gamers out there. So what do you think of all this? It looks like my list wasn't far off the consensus, we actually share a lot of JRPGs even if we rank them in different order. Can't say the same for the PS2 though, but that's a story for another time. What are your 10 favorite JRPGs on the PS1 and how do they compare to that consensus? Leave a comment. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!